There are a lot of videos on YouTube of people making these Japanese candy kits. They're very fun to watch, but they also remind me very strongly of chemistry kits, especially the sushi kit. And that got me thinking, how does it work? What is the science of crazy pop and cooking sushi? The sushi kit contains packets that only require the addition of water to create things that look like rice or fish or egg and little fish eggs. All the text on the box is in Japanese, but I found an English list of ingredients that gave me some clues to how it all works. The list of ingredients covers all the packets in the kits, and I'm sure that some of these ingredients, like sugar, corn syrup and gelatin, are present in multiple of the packets. Speaking of gelatin, let's start with the easiest to understand packets, the egg mix and the fish mix. These powders combine with water to form colorful jellies that look like egg or like fish on the final sushi. The colors are different between them, but the most important component is the same, and that's gelatin. Gelatin is made from the collagen of either skin or bones of animals, usually pigs or cows. Collagen is a protein that's also found in your own body and it gives structure and strength to connective tissues like skin or ligaments or tendons. And gelatin is basically collagen that has been removed from skin or bones and the very large collagen molecules are broken down into smaller pieces which are the gelatin components. And when you add boiling water, these gelatin molecules then rearrange themselves and when the water cools down, the gelatin and water molecules together form a gel. Now the gelatin in the kit works with cold water because this is instant gelatin which doesn't need heat to separate the gelatin strands. They're already separated and they just need water to gel together. Now the rice in the kit is more complicated and I'm still not entirely sure I have this correct, but here's what I found out. The ingredients list starch and milk products, and those are the main ingredients in this packet. I cross-checked ingredient lists of other kits, and the ones that contain this candy rice all have milk products, so that's definitely part of it. The actual reactions happening here are quite complicated, and there are multiple things going on. After talking to some other scientists, I think there are two main things happening. One is a reaction between milk products and an acidifier. Milk and acid curdle to form sort of lumpy gel-like substance. Uh, think of cottage cheese, for example. That's kind of what this looks like, too. The other thing that's happening is a reaction between starch and water. We can prove that there's starch in here by setting a little bit aside and using iodine as an indicator. The iodine will turn blue whenever there's starch present, and you can see that that clearly happens here. It's very dark, so it looks almost black. Starch comes from plants and is a long carbohydrate made up of glucose units. It's a major component of flour. Starch exists in tiny granules which swell and break when they're boiled in water. This releases the starch molecules which then all stick together to make a goopy gluey mess and that creates the kind of glue that you might know from kindergarten. That process is called starch gelatinization. But we're not adding hot water here. Like the gelatin earlier, this starch is soluble in cold water. That means that this starch is pre-gelatinized starch that has already been cooked and dried. But now the best part, the roe or fish eggs. They're very fun to make and this is actually a molecular gastronomy trick. It's a technique called spherification that was made popular by El Bulli restaurant in Spain to turn liquids like fruit juice into little balls that resemble fish eggs. And that's exactly what we're doing here. We have two solutions here. Solution A contains calcium sulfate and solution B contains our juice, or in this case sugar and food coloring, as well as a chemical called sodium alginate. Sodium alginate is found in brown seaweed or kelp. And when the alginate from solution B meets the calcium ions from solution A, they instantly form a gel before the droplet has a chance to disperse. So now there's a layer of gel keeping the droplet together in the round shape it had when it fell from the dropper and hit the liquid. So it looks just like a fish egg. There is another type of spherification reaction in molecular gastronomy that's called reverse spherification. And that's where you add calcium solution to sodium alginate. I tried to do that here after I made enough fish eggs by adding some of solution A to solution B, but it didn't work. I think the concentration of each solution has to be different to do the reverse reaction. But hey, science is all about experimentation and sometimes it doesn't work. There is no chemistry involved in creating the rest of the candy sushi, which is just assembling all the different parts. But it's kind of interesting to think about where the black color of the fake nori comes from. This is colored with squid ink. And the black color in squid ink comes from a pigment called melanin that absorbs a lot of light, and that's why it's black. 
It's the same molecule that you find in fruit when it turns brown, and even in your own skin where it helps protect your body from UV radiation. So that's the sushi all done. It was a lot of fun to make. It did not taste very good to be honest, but I really enjoyed figuring out how it all works.